wealth is economic, but being poor is a disabling frame of mind and a depressed condition of your spirit. And you must vow never, ever, ever to be poor again. My pastor, Reverend Dr. Cecil Chip Murray, told me that there's that, that is not what people call you, it's what you answer to that's important. And never, ever, ever answer out of your name. And then I added to argue with a fool proves there are two. No one can tell you that you're not successful. No one can tell you what you cannot do. No one can tell you that you cannot be a hero or a shero or a success story in this world. No one can hurt you but yourself. And you're not going to do that, are you? No. We're here to talk about that choice. Let me get personal for a minute. I grew up, as I mentioned, right down the street from this school. But I also grew up in a tougher neighborhood than 35th and West. I grew up in Compton, California. When I was growing up in Compton, how old are you? Well, how are you? Well, is there anybody in here who's 10? 10, okay, the young girl, young girl in the pink. How, what's your name? Jasmine. Hey, Jasmine is 10 years of age. When I was 10 years of age, a couple choices had to be made in my life. Number one, I decided that I wanted to be, at 10 years of age, I wanted to be a businessman. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Why? Because when I was 10 years of age, Jasmine, somebody came into my school just like this with a suit on and a tie on and had money and was successful. And I said, I want to be like him. And I decided to start a business. When I was 10 years of age, I started the neighborhood candy house. And I got $40 from my mother and I started this business and I made $300 a week legally. When I was 10 years of age, then I found girls and lost the business. It's been a recurring theme in my life. But yeah. when I was 10 years old, I figured out that I could become an entrepreneur. Now, how many people in here would like to make $300 a week when you're 10 years? Thank you, church. <laughs> OK, now check this out. If I'm, if I'm 42 today, and I was 10 years old then. How many years ago? That 32 years ago, I made how much a week? $300 a week. Do you know how much $300 a week is today? It's a lot. It's like $1,000 a week. Would you like to make $1,000 a week? Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you about choices now and dignity. Are you paying attention? The most important thing I'm about to tell you, and I'm going to invite up my friends, I'm telling you right now. There was another choice I could make. And you guys all have to make that choice every time you go home from school. There was a guy who lived next to me. He was my next door neighbor. His name was Tweet. Tweet lived 97 pound terrors. <laughs> he would stand on the street corner like this. He had these raggedy jeans on. Back then, he was hanging down on his rear end. He had a raggedy shirt on and fake gold around his neck. Do you know where the raggedy pants, you know where the pants with no build on, you know where that comes from? Jail. Jail. Why did he take the build off from you from jail? Because if you have on your belt, you might try and kill somebody for yourself. If you, very, what's your name, man? Chris. Chris, Chris is a smart guy. He said, and he knows this, if they take, they take the belt from you in jail so you don't hang yourself. The cats running around with no shoelaces in their shoes. They think they're cool. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up? Not you. Why did they take the shoelaces from you in jail? So you don't kill yourself or kill somebody else because you can take the shoelaces and connect them together and hang yourself or hang somebody else. So I say to cats running around with no shoelaces and no build around their waist, do you realize that you are a suicide watch victim in jail? That's who you 
are profiling to be. Do you want to be like that? No. Tweet was like that. Tweet thought he was cool. Tweet would hang out all day, terrorizing everybody in the neighborhood. Tweet threw a dead animal over my fence to try to intimidate my family. Tweet, at 17 years of age, he thought controlled my neighborhood. Tweet never got to 18. Tweet was killed. Because whatever goes around, comes around. What's happening to this astronaut in space? Is he, when he goes around, he's going to, he's going to come around. Oh, he's a, the universe has a perfect accounting system. Whatever goes around. So when Tweet treated other people bad, what happened to him? He got treated bad. When Tweet killed people, what happened to Tweet? He got killed. There was another friend that I had growing up, Andrew Cohen. Will my out in my neighborhood. His name was George. George reminded me of you. George was a straight A student. But George played around when people came to visit him in school. He didn't take life seriously. He thought life was a joke. He wanted to be cool. So George didn't want to hang around me. George wanted to hang around Tweet. George got killed like Tweet at 18 years of age. You understand the message? Yes. Everybody around my neighborhood, prison, probation, and parole. But I had a dream and a different vision for myself. I'm going to leave you with this story. There are three types of people like three types of birds. There are eagles, there are buzzards, and there are turkeys. And eagles don't fly in packs. You have never seen a flock of eagles. An eagle is a high